Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and boy, I got the largest heist in history, one of them at least. And every time I make something about computer cybersecurity or even cryptocurrencies and NFTs, it just keeps getting bigger. Like Muda, it's just bigger and bigger. And what can I say? We're in a world where computers are becoming more prevalent. The internet is becoming more prevalent. Everything's got a blockchain. Your DNA is filled with a blockchain. Of course, things are going to get much more bigger. Things are going to amp up. And as this case what if i told you a small little not really a small game but a game one of the success stories for nfts and crypto gaming got itself completely hacked and 620 plus million dollars were just yoinked siphoned and stolen you might be like whoa that's big let's start off let's eat this crumb of crap and understand just where we begin you might remember Axie Infinity from a video where we talked about NFTs and gaming and sort of the new thing that's sort of emerging known as play to earn, where a lot of gaming companies will release NFTs, you know, and they'll allow you to rent out elements of gameplay to other people so you can profit off of, you know, whatever you've invested into a title. Now, Axie Infinity we covered a while back where we looked at really sketchy systems involving scholarships, renting out, you know, these basic creatures and breeding and all that nonsense and basically the play to earn atmosphere now axie infinity without a doubt is one of the success stories for crypto gaming and all that stuff and if you want to experience that that video is something that i highly recommend you watch but axie infinity is in fact a game okay a game where you battle collect and you earn now in this case i've actually put on the internet condom if you will because there ain't no way i'm sticking my cock in internet nft nonsense without putting any form of digital rubber on and in this case i got a nice virtual machine and uh, to understand, uh, this is the virtual machine where I've got Axie Infinity. I made an account, I made a little wallet, and frankly, in this situation, I've got the game actually installed. Now, they've got Axie Infinity and something known as Project L. I'm not willing to grab L's, I'm willing to see what Axie Infinity is all about. Yeah, if you actually look at Axie Infinity and the money traded in the last 30 days, they're claiming $44.7 million of volume got traded. Now, some of these things can be as cheap as 20 bucks, I don't know, maybe a few bucks. They can get progressively more expensive as time goes there. Hey, if you think buying Axies wasn't wild enough and breeding them, you also got land and whatnot. Now, to understand, I got the game right here, and we're going to hit play. I'm just going to show you what it's like. We're going to open it up. Here it is. It's firing up. You got Blood Moon Rising. What is this game all about? Well, let's go on a magic adventure. And no, I did not buy Axies because we ain't starting that nonsense. Oh no, I got no Axies. Oh, I think I actually do need Axies. I think I might, I think I might need to, I think I might need to like, I think I might need to rent out my asshole to get some Axies. But here the game's got a pretty Flash game vibe to it. Hey, I'm not judging it. I haven't been able to play the game because I ain't buying Axies. So to understand, if you've played it, look up some gameplay online, judge it for yourself. It could be a hidden banger, okay? Elden Ring might have Game of the Year contenders thrown out just because of it. But let's move on. So you might be like, how does $600 million get stolen? Well, in this case, Ronin, which is the blockchain that Axie Infinity sort of backpedals on, the backbone, if you will, the backbone blockchain, actually had a security breach on their network where 173,600 Ethereum was uh, yoinked. It was exploited, taken away from their bridge. Again, a bridge connects the blockchains together. Ronin's blockchain to the Ethereum blockchain, so you can have cross-blockchain shenanigans. Also, 25.5 million USDC was actually exploited. USDC is a stable coin. Remember, stable coins from the whole Save the Kit stuff where we talked about it, where $1 is pegged to one stable coin. It could be USDC, USD Tether, basically anything claiming to be a stable coin. Their idea is they value, they peg the value to the United States dollar for something one to one. Again, using it as a general, you know, cryptocurrency to transfer, you know, other different types of cryptocurrencies between stable coins, very important. Now, if Ken, because of this, they actually had to halt all the activity on the Ronin Bridge and the Katana Dex, okay, which is a decentralized exchange. They're working with law enforcement agencies, forensic cryptographers, and investors to make sure all the funds are recovered or, in fact, reimbursed to the people that have lost them. Because remember, $600 million has been lost not just from these people, but from the various individuals who have invested into playing Axie Infinity and buying all the various NFTs and the plots of digital land. Yes, as sad as it sounds, 
Some people, you know, some might claim fools part with their money, but I genuinely do feel bad for anybody who's lost a significant chunk of money from this entire shenanigan. So Sky Mavis, in this case, for those of you who don't know who Sky Mavis is, they are the company that runs, I believe, Ronin and, in fact, Axie Infinity. If you go to their website and you check products real quick, Axie Infinity is their one game, all about battling and collecting cute axes while earning cryptocurrencies. Yes, they also invest in marketplaces and the Ronin ecosystem, okay? So again, they're very heavily involved into it. Their chain consisted of nine validator nodes. In order to recognize a deposit event or a withdrawal event, five out of the nine validator signatures are actually needed. You might be wondering, why not all? Well, the reality of it is, is that in order for them to keep synchronizations going, okay, in order for them to actually, you know, keep things moving forward without being stuck in synchronization states, they chose to have five out of the nine, okay? Now, because of this hack, they've actually upped that number to eight out of the nine, and they'll be expanding those validators over time actually expediting it as they've claimed over here. Now, what happened was the hacker actually managed to gain control over Sky Mavis's four Ronin validators, plus a third-party validator run by Axie Dow. Now, the validator key scheme, which they claim was set up to be decentralized so that it limits an attack vector similar to this one, but the attacker found a back door into the gas-free RPC node, which they then abused to get the signature for the Dow validator. So again, back in November 2021, what actually happened was Sky Mavis actually requested help and assistance from the Axie DAO simply to get free transactions, distributing them because the user load was so immense on their servers from various new players jumping into Axie Infinity as a game, all right? They were jumping into it, the blockchain was taxed, and they basically found a way to stop gap. Now, what Axie Dow did was it allowed Sky Mavis to basically sign all these transactions on their own behalf. And then later on in December 2021, they then discontinued it, but that allow list access was never revoked to begin with. So once the attacker got into Sky Mavis, they were able to get the signature from the Axie Dow validator, and that's where all the malicious nonsense started. Now, again, there's a bit of sussiness regarding why this hack even began in the first place. And in some of this explanation, I'm wondering why certain things were never revoked, why certain things were ignored. Pretty big security flaws, but let's move on. When money is stolen in cryptocurrencies, it's moved from a wallet to a wallet. So there's a forensic accounting of where that money ended up going to. This isn't like fiat currency, like actual US dollars, right? Where you can take US dollars and if you're smart enough and you have enough resources, you can navigate it through numerous other countries, numerous partnerships, numerous financial systems, and really start obscuring trails. It's not that it makes it hard to detect, it's just that when you're starting to deal with multiple different agencies, governmental organizations, that money and tracking the tra and tracing it really becomes more difficult, okay? So again, with cryptocurrencies, everyone can look at a blockchain. Remember the saying, men lie, women lie, the blockchain never actually lies. And because the blockchain doesn't lie, we have the exact address of the person who hacked this money. So the hacker's address is OX09862AAF215129960DC57EB061E23E2F96. The reason I say these addresses out loud is frankly because some people are, you know, they, they can't see too well, so just listing the whole thing out auditorily, they can look it up for themselves, all right? So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, going down into the situation, you can see that they've had numerous transactions. So again, because the blockchain is here, we can go all the way back and see their transactions as of six days and 19 hours ago, okay? Where Binance touched into the Ronan Bridge Exploiter. So this is the Ronan Bridge Exploiter. This is the name that they've been given. Of course, six days ago, one of the largest transactions started to occur. So in this case, they got 300 Ether, 300 Ether. Then they got 3,390 Ether. So how much is 3,390 Ethereum six days and 18 hours ago? That would be equivalent to $10 million, $10.2 million. 
And again, this was just one of many transactions. They started getting more and more and more. Again, these are $10.2 million transactions all happening at once. If you were to go to a bank right now and try to wire that kind of cash, there'd be a few people willing to come up to you with badges asking you exactly what the nature of this transaction would have been. Because it's definitely out there, okay? This is not a big multinational company transferring an amount of money to another person that has verified history of what their nature of business is and the volume of and the pattern of transactions they typically have this is one big mega transaction now in this account right here we can actually see that the value of it is nearly 600 million dollars okay so around 598.611 million dollars is what they're actually sitting at that's a lot of money just sitting in this account at the moment Whenever you see these zero Ethereum chain transactions, what you have to notice is when they're doing like these USD coins, you can see like from here, the Ronin Bridge Exploiter is uh, basically sending like 10 million, okay, uh, USD coins. And here you can actually see the big transaction, 170 3,600 ether from the Ronin Bridge that was exploited to the Ronin Bridge Exploiter, right? That's where we're looking at. And then further again, you can see 25.5 million USD coin transfer from the Ronin Bridge to the Exploiter. So these are big sums of cash, big fucking sums of money just gone, just sent to this person. Now, what's interesting is these hacks happened six days ago. And again, just today, the actual team behind it discovered that there was a security breach and all the way back on March 23rd, $600 million were just siphoned out. Like, this is what's shocking to me. That amount of money moving out of accounts should have triggered so many red flags over the company that I'm surprised this announcement, this newsletter didn't happen almost a week ago. Again, I don't know what kind of dicks were being held when this amount of money was transferred and not a single soul decided to really look into it, publish this information that far in advance. This seems incredibly sketchy to me, but let's move on. Now, one of the things that they said is, is Ronin safe for me to use? As we witness, Ronin is not immune to exploitation and the attack has reinforced the importance of prioritizing security. Really? When you're dealing with that much money, now you think of prioritizing security after the heck, what? Okay, listen, let's move on. What does this mean? Why are we being notified about the breach right now? The Sky Mavis team discovered the security breach on the 29th after a report that a user was unable to withdraw 5,000 Ethereum from the actual bridge. Now, what really wilds me out is one account actually exists, name is Botrix, who actually messaged one of the co-founders to Axie Infinity and said, hey buddy, I got proof you guys cashed out over 5 billion from the game, and I'll leak it to everyone if you don't unban me from the Discord. And this was sent out on Saturday, so I assume that's Saturday, like literally three, four days ago from the time I filmed this video, to which the actual account was like, Lamau, you need a fucking psychiatrist. So this person said, I told my therapist, she says you're a bad influence so a little bit of a meme-tacular person but they posted a thread where they kind of went into like a full sort of conspiracy claiming that this could have been an inside job rug pull something around a 75 percent chance again i'm not backing up these claims i'm not even going into this thread because unless i have definitive proof about a rug pull of this nature from the actual company that is something that i would never claim and never want to push out and to also think about it it's really dangerous that somebody would do a ruck pull and we'll get right into why that would be the case so what does this mean for users who have funds on the ronin network as of now users are unable to withdraw or deposit funds to the ronin network sky mavis is committed to ensuring all of the drain funds are recovered or reimbursed now in this case the ron token that's being used is losing its value day by day, okay? In fact, because of this hack, they've dropped down 20%, all right? They went from two dolans and 28 cents and they've harmonized somewhere around one dolan and 78 cents. Not exactly looking pretty for anybody that's invested in this token specifically, but hey, you know, what do you expect when a hack like this occurs and that much money is siphoned away? Everyone is shocked, especially, and it's gonna rattle the ones who are at the most bottom the hardest. So remember a while back when we looked at the uh, 2016 hack regarding cryptocurrencies and the one uh, rapper out there, the one influencer that made really crappy rap music, but also was uh, indicted by the Department of Justice. Yeah, that Darwin Award winning individual. You know, when you actually are part of something like this and this kind of money gets stolen, according to the blockchain, a lot of this exploiter, this hacker is shifting money into centralized exchanges, possibly decentralized exchanges. And some people have said, oh, this person might have had to 
give them their ID for a KYC check. That I might have to put real sussy shit on because I would believe somebody who's doing a hack like this, if they're moving money around, probably is smart enough and resourceful enough to hack to have fake identification. But the problem with these kind of hacks and actually a big saving grace is because of the blockchain, when this kind of money gets stolen, it's very, very difficult, all right, to move that money into the fiat marketplace. Let me explain something. When you have $600 million of crypto money, that $600 million worth of digital assets, that cannot be used for anything tangible. You wanna buy a house, IRS won't let you. You wanna buy a fancy car, IRS won't let you, okay? When you try purchasing a big giant mansion with cryptocurrency, try finding a bank that's going to allow this asset transfer. Also, when this money gets stolen, it's very easily blacklisted. So when this person's going to try converting this money into actual cold hard US dollars or whatever fiat currency, they're gonna need to provide some actual identification and that's what's gonna screw them because this trail will remain on the blockchain forever. We're going to be knowing about this regardless of what method they use to transfer. So yes, $600 million did get stolen. The real actual difficulty now after the hack and after siphoning it is trying to move this money and actually trying to get it out in any tangible tangible way. I'm going to wager that a grand majority of this cash is going to be sitting in this account and it's going to be heavily scrutinized by law enforcement agencies and FinTrack crypto investigators just and they're going to be scanning every Ethereum that's going to be shifting from this account to any other account and regardless of whatever laundering services that exist even things like Tornado Cash which are not immune to investigation they're going to be analyzed very carefully and this person will be caught okay at this point any federal agency anybody wants to make an example. But I think what really needs to be a main staple is regulation. And I'm not using that as a buzzword, okay? Things like this need some variant of regulation. And the reality of it is, is that regulation is going to help. Listen, the reason this happened was because of piss poor security issues. I'm not going to get into inside jobs. I'm not going to get into conspiracy theories. I am going to say that if you're dealing with this kind of cash, this volume of cash, you need to be treated like a financial agency. You need to take you need to take good care of your cybersecurity. you need to take good care of your systems to prevent back doors from being exploited to prevent any type of uh, white listing to happen any type of allow listing to happen any type of transactions to just happen like this and if you are holding on to cash like this you need to make sure you have at least some bare level alert set up that tells you hey guys half a billion dollars is being transferred to an account maybe we should start looking at it you shouldn't know about it a week after when people are telling you your team should know about it literally the fucking second the transaction is even authorized that is a big no-no okay ladies and gentlemen this is how the 600 million dollar hack of one of crypto gaming's most successful projects have happened Hopefully you've learned something today, and if you are involved in projects like this, or you have put money into services like this, make sure that your money is definitely held on by you. Make sure that whatever you're investing into, whatever you're putting into, whatever you're trusting with your security meets every check imaginable, because it shows that even companies that are, the, that are at the top of their game do not have their shit together, okay? If you have money in digital assets, take very good care of it. And again, if you're talking about investing, don't take my advice. I'm not a financial expert. Nobody on the internet really is, aside from people that hold licenses. Go talk to them. What I can tell you is if you are involved in projects like this, take advantage of your cybersecurity, hold on to your money in a, in, in a cold wallet, hold on to your money appropriately. And if you are putting your money into chains like this, make sure that they are completely 1000% safe. Again, that's not a complete guarantee, but make sure that when you're putting your assets into chains like this, that uh, they take security at an utmost degree. Because if uh, they don't, you're the one losing everything. You're the one losing whatever you can. Hopefully the people that got their money stolen get reimbursed, I don't know. Honestly, when shit like this happens, it really is just, um, it really, it really is just a shell shock to everyone involved. That said, though, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.